We are. We are. We are cultivate. 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 We are cultivate. The Oracle Network. Hello and welcome to Yield Crime, where we discuss the funny, strange, and obscure crimes of yesteryear. I'm your host, Lindsay Valenti, and with me is my sister and co-host, Maddie Stengel. Hello. Hi. How's it going? It's going. Yep. It's snowing. Oh, is that what it's doing? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's snowing now, so that's fun. I could tell something was happening because my wrist is starting to bother me. So, <laughs> yep. hey. gotta love that when you can actually feel it in your bones. Mm-hmm. Super fun. Yep. Well, we have had our birthday weeks done for our parents. Mm-hmm. So now we're just going into straight up normal February, I guess. And I had originally planned something else for this week. But then I wasn't feeling it, so I changed it to this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I was I was wondering because when you were like, "I've got a lot of research left to do," I was like, "Wait a minute." Yeah, I. This doesn't seem any particular reason. I just I wasn't interested in the one that I had picked before. That's fair. Like I just wasn't feeling it, so I was like, "I want to do something different," and I was kind of scrolling through the spreadsheet. And came across this one. It was like, this sounds fun. Hell yeah. So hopefully you will think it's fun too. Does it have romance and intrigue? No, it actually gets really sad. Oh no. (laughs) Gonna be fun. (laughs) Right, well. So this week we are going to be discussing the Crown Prince Sato. Have you heard of him before? Mm -hmm. My Sunday bird brain. Is saying, nope, no, I have not. (laughs) I hadn't, so I wouldn't be surprised if you had not heard of him either. Prince Sato. This is taking place in Korea. Okay, I was just going to say, is it it in kind of the Asian countries, Sato? Yeah, so this is from Korea. Blanket apology up front. I did my best, so I will do my best to pronounce everyone's names correctly throughout this. And if I pronounce them wrong or translated them wrong, I'm sorry. Yeah, if you're <laughs> if you're expecting perfection and you've been here this long, you should know <laughs> that our <laughs> Midwestern accents and all other names don't mesh well. Yeah. I mean it's episode eighty four. If you made it this long, you know that I'm not the you best <laughs> at uh, the foreign words. So I will do my best. Yeah. It'll be perfect. It'll be great. Information was pulled from the following sources. A 2020 book, The Prince of Mournful Thoughts by Caroline Kim and Alexander Chi. A 2020 History of Yesterday article by James Wan. 2019 Korea Jun Ang Daily Fiction vs. History article by Kim Seong Hee. I probably should have translated your name, so I apologize if I didn't say that right. 2016 Naked History article by E.R., I'm assuming that's an abbreviation. And five Wikipedia pages because I had to cross-reference a bunch of things this time. I bet. Wikipedia thanks you for your patronage. Yeah. (laughs) If you don't want to donate to us, donate to Wikipedia. They do God's work. Heck yeah. Please do. And links to all these articles will be included in the show notes. When you hear the term Mad King, many of us think of some form of European royalty. Today, I'm going to challenge that mindset by sharing the story of a member of the Korean royal family that could give his European counterparts a run for their money. Ooh. Crown Prince Sato was born Yi Sun on February 13th, 1735, to King Yangjo of Joseon and his royal noble consort, Young of the Jeonii clan, also known as Lady. Sewoni. All right. Yi San 
was the sixth child born to Lady E and the only son. Dang. So was he the youngest Mm -mm. then? Okay. His siblings include Princess Ha Pung, who was born 1727, three other sisters who were born and died um, between 1728 and 1732, whose names I couldn't find, Princess Hai Yang, who was born in 1732, and his younger sister, Princess Ha Wang, who was born in 1738. Prince Sato was born into the Joseon, or Yi dynasty, which ruled over Korea from July 17, 1392, until the Japan-Korea Treaty of 1910. Dang. Let that sink in for a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Almost 600 years. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, and then how long has the current, the Queen's family reigned? I have no idea. I didn't look that up. <laughs> Probably not nearly as close. There's so many clans that are like, no, this was mine yeah. for at least five years. <laughs> There's so many clans. It's, yeah. 600 year reign. That's why I had to do so much wow. like looking all over the place because there's a million and one clans it seems like and i don't understand the korean monarchy levels so i it was a little difficult for me to understand so again apologies if i did it wrong (laughs) that makes sense that it would be different though because different landscape different culture different needs Mm -hmm. hopefully less bloodshed (laughs) probably not but you can hope well and there's there can be multiple consorts. So yeah, that also kind of screwed me up a little bit when I was looking at the things. So I'll just jump into it. Okay. So King Yangzhou, who was Sato's father, had a bit of a chip on his shoulder, given the fact that he was the illegitimate son of King Sukyong and a palace maid. Uh-oh. In fact, he was never supposed to be king at all. He only assumed the mantle yeah. after his brother, King Kunyong, died under mysterious circumstances. Ah, so there is just enough bloodshed. It's just as much bloodshed. Yeah. It's never as mysterious as they think it is. There are many who believe that the king killed his brother to claim the throne during a time when two court factions, the Doran faction and the Soran faction, were warring. But there are also historians that believe his brother likely died as a result of food poisoning complications after eating contaminated seafood. And that, many believe, is the more likely candidate for him dying unexpectedly. Because I guess he really liked to eat shrimp, but they didn't live anywhere near the sea. Oh, no. So they, they would have to try to preserve it and then feed it to him? And he died in the middle of summer. So... Yeah. I'm going to go on a limb and assume it was the contaminated seafood. Yeah. I don't feel like traveling refrigeration was very good at that point in time. No, I don't think so. If really in existence much at all. Yeah. (laughs) Because I bet it, well, it might have. It might have, but. Around that time, but not. Based off where they were located in the country, I don't think it would have done much good. By the time it got where it needed to go. Sato, the king's son, was noted as, quote, a solemn child, slight of build, long-necked, with a sad expression in his eyes, end quote. Mm Long-necked. He had a neck long enough that they had to say something about it. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. (laughs) Is it supposed to, like, imply that he's, I don't know. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Beautiful? Long necked, like like a swan. I don't know. I don't know. S- smooth. It's a weird thing to say about somebody. Yeah. Like you're gonna love this guy. He's got the longest neck. He's got a long, <laughs> beautiful neck. He's got some sad <laughs> eyes, but his neck is so long. You're gonna die when you see this man's neck. Sato was removed from his mother, Lady E, after he was just over three months old, and moved to the palace of the Prince Regent. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's why he was sad all the time. Yeah. The king's eldest son, Crown Prince Ha Yu died in 1728 at the age of nine, which meant oh, no. that Sato was now the heir apparent and destined to rule in his father's stead. Dang. 
Dang. He died at nine. Mm -hmm. I suppose it could have been of like any of the different. Well, and if you think about it, it's like it's like I said earlier, he had three older sisters that all died within the span of like four years. Mm. So it yeah, it's not child and uh, adolescent mortality was pretty high back then. Mm -hmm. Didn't really matter where you were in the world. It still happened. Exactly. Many thought that sending him away from the main palace and away from his mother was a hasty move on the king's part. You think? Three months? But at that time, King Yongzhou was 40 years old and had already been ruling for 11 years. So he was just getting tired and he was like, listen, this baby's got to take my place. (laughs) I suppose the 40s, 40 is old. That would be, that would be well within retirement age. He had the money. He wanted to ensure that his son was established as the future prince regent as soon as possible, so he was raised by the best teachers and resources so he could make him a worthy heir. Because in his mind, remember, he is the illegitimate yeah. son of the previous ruler. So he wants to ensure that his heir is going to be even better than him. To prove that he did what he was supposed to be doing and he was worthy to be king. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, but like... That doesn't make it okay. He's not going to have any object permanence for like another three years. Like, (laughs) calm down. Yeah. Sato's mother didn't have much of a say in his upbringing, but she did visit him often at his palace, at times even bringing his father along. Instead, Sato was raised by court ladies and eunuchs who let the prince do pretty much whatever he wanted. Uh Uh-oh. Sato was an extremely bright child. He was able to walk at four months and start speaking at six. Dang. Yeah. By the age of seven months, he could point to the four cardinal directions. And by the age of three, he could recite half of Confucius's Analects, which is a collection of his yeah books. so pretty impressive that's disgusting like so impressive but oh my god you're three like you should be like eating dirt and like <laughs> but he's the he's the prince he's not allowed to eat I, dirt. I, I know crown prince sato and lady hai Igung were married over seven days in the first month of 1744 which, according to the lunar calendar, would have been February 13th through the 20th. They were both nine, as was the custom at the time. (sighs) Their relationship at first was like that of playmates, and the pair lived in separate houses. Good. Other than Lady Haigang and the occasional visits from his mother, Sato's only other visitors were his sisters, Princess Hawang, Hapeng, and Haiyang who would sit and enjoy sweets and tea with their brother when they'd visit him at his palace. Oh, but they, like, couldn't play? They could only just kind of co- coexist in formal situations? Yeah, I just don't think they were allowed to actually play. It doesn't sound like that. I mean, if the if he memorized Confucius, mm-hmm. uh, he probably wasn't allowed to climb trees as often as you and I were able to as kids. As as often as the peasant kids would have been able to, or the yeah. commoners or whatever. Tree climbing's the best. I feel bad. The dates vary on when exactly and at what age the prince became ill. But at some point mm-hmm. between 1740 and 1746, Sato contracted an unknown illness that many in the palace feared would kill him. Oh, man. It took away all of his strength and lingered for many months. His wife noted in her 1805 memoir that he lost consciousness several times throughout this sickness. By the time he recovered, he was pale and listless for several months, and those who knew him in his earliest years feel that the prince's temperament changed following his prolonged period of sickness. Yeah, that makes sense. Do people have theories on what it could have possibly been? I couldn't find what they thought it was. Okay. I would. I don't know. I kind of. I'm leaning towards some sort of fever, some sort of really intense fever. If it zaps you, yeah. I, I don't know. Kind of drives you to unconsciousness. I don't know if they had stuff like scarlet or yellow fever in South Korea at this time. Yeah. I'm not. I don't know. But many believe this is when his mental illness started to present itself. Oh, well, probably. Because if he did have fevers that long, it would have definitely messed with 
some sort of really important development. So at this point, he would have been anywhere between 5 and 11 when he contracted this illness. Oh, yeah, that's... I'm assuming it's it's closer to when he was 11 because his wife was there. So it would have more likely been between 9 and 11 when he got this illness. And okay. the only reason I put the date range is because the dates varied so much with the different sources that I was looking at that there mm-hmm. was no concrete year saying, yeah, this is the year that he got sick. Okay. So, but I'm going to lean towards 9 to 11 because she was there when it happened. And considering okay. they got married when they were nine. Right. That makes sense to me. Anyway. Yeah, she would have been around. Mm-hmm. After Sato recovered from his sickness... He and his wife moved into a new home that was closer to the palace where his mother lived, perhaps in hopes that she could help to care for him. Are you kidding me? Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's going to care about her now. You know. Well, even though... Hasn't known her. Even though, like, they didn't raise him, he did love his parents a lot. Well, was he able to, like, was his mom able to see him? Yeah. Because they made it... She visited him a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes it, that changes it. Yeah. His birth mother, she didn't raise him, but she visited him often. Okay. That makes me feel better. I thought like they like ripped him away from her and then they made her show back up at 11 and be like, fix it. <laughs> no, she she, okay, would, she okay. would visit throughout, but she wasn't actually she involved in the raising of him. He was okay. raised by the eunuchs and the court ladies. Got it. Got it. Okay, that makes me feel better about it. Yep. One positive behavior that developed following his illness was his desire to learn and become better at athletics. He took his studies very seriously, likely in an effort to please his stubborn and strict father. Oh, I bet. Get him to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm doing what you asked. God, <laughs> get out of my room. <laughs> Sato's temperament was very different from his father, King Youngjo. He was thoughtful and took his time before making any decisions, choosing to Mm. listen carefully to others without letting his own opinions on the matter be known. King Young Jo took Sato's reticence to quickly answer questions posed by his royal tutors as a sign of stubbornness. Of course he did. Because the king was very quick with his judgments. Yeah. I suppose being swift in your judgments, though, was more as a sign of power. Mm -hmm. And so I bet him hesitating at all was a sign of weakness that he didn't want to have in his regime. Especially, I mean, if they've been able to hold it down for 600 years, being thoughtful probably wasn't part of that plan. (laughs) Yeah. As a result, the king ordered Sato to spend even more time studying with his tutors and refused Mm. to invite him to royal banquets and celebrations unless it would appear odd for him to not attend. Okay, that's just rude Yeah, as hell. Yeah. Sato desperately wanted to please his father, but was unsure how to do so. He often saw both sides of any question posed to him, and when he would hesitate to answer questions posed to him by the king, he would ask Sato in front of all of the ministers if he was an idiot. (sighs) Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Father of the year. Seriously. Way to go, my guy. Sato soon grew to hate his morning audiences, as half the time his father ignored him, and the rest of the time he would berate him in front of anyone present about the state of his clothing, his hair, or his tardiness. Sato, although he loved and respected his father, was terrified of him, and grew exceedingly anxious in his presence. Yeah, I would too. I mean, you're essentially... You gotta think about it as a dog that loves his owner, but is constantly getting hit by him every morning. Mm Mm-hmm. The dog doesn't want to be around you, but he still loves you. Yeah. But like, stop stop hitting your kid. Stop, <laughs> stop hurting your kid. Jeez. He grew anxious to the point that he would wake before dawn and demand to be dressed in his royal robes. He would then sit at his desk and work on memorizing his books before falling back to sleep. Mm. Once awoken by the eunuchs, he would be late washing his face and setting his hair, and his clothes would be rumpled from sleep. And more often than not, he would be seen running into the main audience hall in Chengdeo Palace to meet with his father, a veritable hot mess. He would just look like he just rolled out of bed, basically. Yeah. So as you can imagine, this didn't impress his father very much. No, 
because he can't tell his father that the whole reason why he's late is he was studying and fell back asleep. Yep. It didn't help that his anxiety developed into a stutter that would only appear when oh, Sato was no. in his father's presence. No, this poor baby. This further enraged the king, who would openly mock him in front of anyone with an earshot. It got so bad that just the sight of the prince would cause the king to become ill-tempered with disgust. Oh, that's awful. Following his illness, Sato's men mental instability would manifest in a number of ways. In addition to his stutter in the presence of his father, he had developed a terror of the sound of thunder, and he would often wish for death. Oh, the poor baby. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like, death was super <laughs> common and easy at that time. Mm -hmm. And his siblings yep. were unfortunate recipients of that. So if you were, I mean, if you were withstood that type of abuse day in and day out with no end in sight. I mean, I can see how you would get to that point. Mm -hmm. In 1748, Princess Ha Peng, Sato's second eldest sister, died at the age of 21 on June 24th. Mm -hmm. He was 13 at the time that she passed. <sighs> Sato and his wife started to live as a more traditional husband and wife following his capping ceremony when he came of age at 15 and was given the status of Prince Regent in 1749. Sato and Lady Haigung's marriage was consummated the same month. When he was 13? He was 15. He came oh. of age at 15. Okay. And, but sh she was probably 15 too then? Yep, they were the same age. Okay. Uh. Once he was appointed as Prince Regent, Sato was sent in his father's place to perform more and more official duties that the king himself didn't want to perform. Awesome. This included supervising the torture of imperial prisoners. Great place to put your kid who already has like PTSD from you. Awesome. Way to go. Father of the century. Let's yep. just give him the formal title that he deserves. Yep. Wow. In 1750, so the following year, Lady Haigung gave birth to a son, Yi Chung, but he passed just two years later in 1752. Later that same year, on October 28th, she gave birth to another son named Yi Sen, and his birth was widely rejoiced as the male heir. The following month, Sato's other older sister, Princess Haiyang, would pass away on November 12th, 1752, at the age of 20. Jeez. So do you know, okay, so at this point, how many siblings does he have left? One. One younger sister. And he was, he had, he was one of six. Mm -hmm. He was the sixth uh, of seven. Uh, that's a lot of death mm -hmm. for a young person. Prince Sato took the death of his sister very hard, as they had formed a strong relationship after she was similarly disfavored by their father. Oh, no. So they were both kind of the black sheep of the family. Oh, and he lost his partner in crime. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Lady Haigung would go on to give birth to a daughter, Princess Cheo Young, in 1754, and a second daughter, Princess Cheong Seong, in 1756. It's said that Sato's mental illness started to worsen following the birth of his son, Yi Sen. Historians believe that when he contracted the measles, it exacerbated his already weakened mental state, which resulted in nightmares and hallucinations. So he developed the measles around the time that his son was born. Ah, good time. And prior to that, after their first son had died, after two, when he was two, that he took that very hard. And then later on, even after his son was born, his sister died. You mm -hmm. know, so it was a lot of ups and down emotions Changes. in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of change too. Mm -hmm. I've heard. I've heard the measles. Like, well, I mean, it was kind of just like anything else, like <laughs> syphilis and stuff, too. Like, it just wrecks everything slowly. Mm -hmm. In addition to his fear of thunder, he believed that he saw the god of thunder after reading a Taoist text called Ol Kashagung, and he developed an irrational fear of the sky itself. Oh, no. Around this time, Prince Sato became obsessed with clothes. In an effort to impress his father, he took great pains to buy up all the silks that arrived from China 
so much so that there were hardly any left for others. He'd order up to 30 sets of new clothes at a time and burn some as offerings to the spirit gods. He would try on several robes before selecting one and was very picky, discarding any that were too long, too short, too plain, too bright, too tight, too loose, too scratchy, or too unlucky. Mm. Because he changed his clothes so often, his skin became sensitive and raw to the point that it would sometimes bleed. Oh my God. After he got dressed, he would wear the same clothes for days at a time until they became so rank and filthy that they would have to be disposed of. That's awful. It was during this time of obsession that those close to him, with the exception of his father, realized the prince had a mental illness. It took them that long. I think the rest of it, like only his wife saw some of it, you know, like the fear of thunder and things like that. Or I'm sure they like kind of saw some things, but they didn't necessarily attribute it to mental illness. They thought maybe perhaps it was just some weird quirk. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't a behavior that very obviously was outside of the norm. Still, I mean, like all that stuff kind of building and building and building, you would think that they would have tried to intervene a little sooner because you would have to like know him changing his clothes and stuff. Like people had to have known they were just probably too afraid to say anything until it was almost too late. Maybe that's hard to say. Mm. This obsession with clothes became a problem for Lord Hung, Sato's father-in-law, who helped the prince purchase the multitude of silks when Sato's own allowance wasn't enough. Oh, man. Lord Hung treated Sato as a son, and to make him happy, he sold off some of his best tracts of farming lands in the South to pay for the silks Sato desired. I bet he never said anything, too, because I don't think Sato would have let him do that. Or at least you'd hope not. <laughs> yeah. Those close to the prince took great pains to hide this obsession from the king, who would no doubt see it as just another disappointment. Mm. Sato took a secondary consort named Yong Che, with whom he had a son in 1754. He had another son with her in 1755, who ended up being the ancestor of the first emperor of Korea. Wow. Yong Che and her children were housed by Lady Hai Gung in an effort to hide them from the king, who Sato feared would kill him for bearing more sons. That's not great. According to Yi Yong Ke, who worked at the palace and began to keep a diary for the crown prince when he became prince regent, Sato employed a room full of seamstresses who worked day and night on his multitude of clothes. One seamstress who worked for his mother, named Sun Bi, caught the attention of the prince. She was a simple girl of 16 who was fair-faced, mm -hmm. described as a little chubby, and came from one of the poorest provinces. He soon was able to get her a job working for his own seamstresses so he could see her more often. I don't like it. She's too young. Keep in mind, they're around the same age. Like, she's not that oh. much younger than him. Okay. Like, he's not even 20 yet. So they're, okay, fine. they're pretty close in age. Okay. It's still creepy. Sun B, who worshipped the prince and loved his wife, had no idea that the prince held honest feelings of love for her. She was essentially a slave, so how could she compete with the lady? Oh, In truth, lady. the prince did not love his wife, though he greatly respected her. He resented the fact that she was able to embody everything he could not. She was obedient, graceful, never late for any of the early morning greetings required to the king, queen, and the king's mother, the dowager. She never faltered when the king asked her questions and was able to answer him clearly and succinctly, which pleased the king and even caused him to smile. Wow. Not only that, but she was the perfect wife, calming him when he was upset, providing him with teas and medicines when he was ill, and offering him good advice on how to please his father when in his presence. So he felt guilty for having eyes for somebody else because she was so perfect. I think he couldn't love her because she was everything that he wasn't. He yeah. respected her, but he didn't gen have genuine affection for her. Mm. Sato loved Sunbi freely, presenting her with gifts and enjoyed watching her eat, sleep, and laugh. He was never yeah. happier than when he was with her, as she calmed his anxious mind. As a result of his time with her, his mental illness seemed to abate for a while. He stopped his odd reading habits, wandering at night 
and began to only change his clothes once or twice a day. Dang. He once more took up his duties, much to the joy of his mother, and even the king started to warm up to the fact that he was hearing such good things about his son. Nice. About time. Yeah. As a result of this, the king invited Sato to join the rest of the royal family on their annual visit to the hot baths in Kasung. Ooh, this seems important. Sato was exceedingly happy as he had never been invited before, despite being the prince re- regent. Yep. <sighs> his dad's such a dick. Although his sisters were always invited to go, he had never taken part in the royal train and enjoyed the traditions that the rest of his family so often indulged in. Unfortunately, the day they were to depart, it began to rain heavily and wouldn't stop, resulting in the entire retinue being drenched and making everyone miserable. Even the crowds of people who would often rush the roads to express their adoration of the royal family stayed in their homes, which upset the king even more. So it was his first and only time joining the trip, and it was a bad year for the trip. Mm -hmm. Great. Halfway to Hasung, the king halted the procession and demanded that Prince Sato be sent back to the palace, as he blamed him for the inclement weather, stating that every other time the royal family had gone, the weather had been pleasant and warm. Oh my god, what a fucking asshole. Understandably distraught, the prince was quoted as saying, quote, there is no way I can go on living now, end quote. No, poor baby. How is How old is he at this time? I don't quite know. That was the really hard thing about researching this is that the it's really hard to keep track of the dates and like when certain things I happened. Bet. Yeah, because it could be like a week. It could be three years. Yeah, so it's it's really hard for me to know. I'm... Okay, you don't have to I'm gonna, answer. I'm going to guess he was in his late teens. God. Possibly his early 20s. I'm, I'm assuming late teens. Man. After returning to the palace, Sato consulted with his regular shamans, who read his hands, face, and tossed grains of sand. They shared with him that his greatest fears were the throne, and that his strongest desire was to have the love of his father, which only caused the prince's anxiety to worsen. Like, duh. Yeah, no shit. Did he really need to learn that from you? (laughs) Right. When the royal family returned a few days later, after the dowager had chastised the king for his superstitious and thoughtless actions against his son, they found Sato's chambers in complete disarray, with Sato himself in a poor state. Uh Uh-oh. The king thought that the prince was drunk, which was strictly forbidden as wine wasn't allowed in the palace. And he was so angry that he slapped Sato across the face and forbade him from leaving the palace again. Jeez. Even though he hadn't had anything to drink. No. He was just probably having a mental breakdown Mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not long after this, the king's adoptive mother, Queen In Wang, and his wife, Queen Cheung Seung, died within a month of each other. Wow. Sato had been particularly close with both women, and their deaths took a toll on his already deteriorating mental health. Right. It seems like almost every woman he's ever loved has died, except for two. Yep. After this, the prince just gave up entirely. He no longer cared about pleasing his father, and instead just chose to do what he wanted. Good. About time. He'd play war games with the royal guards and disguise himself so that he could leave the palace and wander around the capital to spend time with sex workers and disreputable men. Hell yeah. Do what you want. He would invite them back to his residence and hold parties that lasted days at a time. Yeah, fuck you, dad. (laughs) The first time the prince's darker nature came to light was in 1757, and it was a complete Uh accident. No... He had been sword fighting with one of his guards, a royal soldier that had taught him many of the sword fighting techniques that he was using, and a man that he deeply respected. The pair had been fighting for about an hour under the full sun when the soldier, who was an older man, began to tire. He tripped on a tree root, and as he fell, his sword grazed the prince's arm, drawing a thin strip of blood. Uh Sato laughed before attacking the man and severing his neck. Jeez. This understandably shocked everyone present, including the prince, 
who dropped his sword and visibly recoiled. He then stripped off his clothes and ordered them to be burned. The soldier's body was taken to his family and no one spoke of it again. And you said this was the beginning Mm -hmm. of his dark side? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Several months passed without incident until one day after the prince had swapped his clothes 20 times before finally just deciding to wear his underclothes, he asked that a large amount of wine be brought to him. The prince had started to drink wine after his father had accused him of being drunk because he figured why not. I mean, that's what teens will do Yep. if you question them. Later that night, a drunken shaman told Sato that his life would end horribly by suffocation. Considering that earlier that day the king had reduced the prince's household budget, he was already on edge. He flew into a rage and accused the shaman of being a fraud. The shaman, realizing his error, knelt before the prince and begged his forgiveness. Instead, Sato drew his favorite dagger and stabbed the shaman in the stomach. When the man did not immediately die, the prince stabbed him several more times before shoving his body away from him. Oh my god. One morning, after the king had mimicked the prince's stutter at a morning audience with the rest of the ministers, Uh Sato came home and demanded his horse. He played war the rest of the afternoon with several dozen of his guards. No one was seriously injured, although some sustained some minor cuts and bruises, as one would when you're like kind of horse playing around. Right. That evening, he began drinking and sat alone in his private chamber until a eunuch came with his nightly snacks. Upon entering, he saw that the prince was pacing and talking loudly to himself, as well as playing with his favorite dagger. Without looking at him, the prince told the eunuch that he would count to ten before he would chase the man like a wild boar. Uh, (laughs) what? (laughs) Understandably confused, the eunuch didn't run when the prince ordered him to and was taken by surprise when the prince turned and threw a dagger at him, hitting him in the upper arm. Oh my god. The man grabbed his arm, turned and fled, only to find the prince chasing him with a spear. Oh my god. (sighs) The prince chased the eunuch like he was a rabbit, before finally cornering him and stabbing him in the abdomen with his spear. Oh my god. He then took the dagger out of the man's arm and hacked off the man's head before mounting it on his spear. Oh, God. Okay. Well, this all escalated super quickly. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. This took place in the sixth month of 1757, so he would have been 22 at this time. Okay. Sato suffered a burst of rage on his birthday in 1760, swearing at his parents his stepmother, Lady Youngbin, as well as his son and two daughters. After this, everyone was terrified of the prince. Yeah, I can't blame him. And it didn't matter who you were, you could find yourself a victim of the prince's murderous intent. Great. Every day, bodies would be carried out of the palace. Royal physicians, court ladies, palace workmen, eunuchs, musicians, translators, and shamans. Finally, the king ordered his son to appear before him when he could no longer ignore what was happening. Yeah, why were you ignoring it in the first place? I don't know. Oh my god. Again, father of the year. Seriously. The king asked his son why he was killing so many innocent people. And after confessing the number of people he had slaughtered and how he had done so, he admitted that the reason was because his father did not love him and that he was viewed as a constant disappointment. Instead of getting angry... The king was quiet for a long time before confessing that he understood and would endeavor to act differently towards his son in the future. Is it too late? Is he going to get murdered? (laughs) Sato was overjoyed and promised that he wouldn't act this way moving forward, seemingly finally getting through to his father and getting Mm -hmm. what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And for a time it worked. Of course. Unfortunately... One morning in 1761, while Sun B was helping him dress, she scratched the prince with her nails, No. which exasperated his already red and feverish skin. Enraged, Sato began to beat her, regardless of the fact that he loved her and that she had borne him two children. Wow. After the prince had exhausted himself, 
he took off his bloody clothes and went off riding on his horse. Those who had been present ran to Sun B and discovered she was still alive. No. Although her face was unrecognizable. Oh, that poor woman. Her nose and cheekbones had been broken, her jaw dislocated, and her eyes were swollen shut to the size of grapefruits. The royal physicians were called, and she was moved to the residence of Lady Haigung, where they hoped to hide her until she was able to heal from her injuries. So that's his wife. Yeah. Unfortunately, the injuries were too severe, and she passed later that evening. Honestly, that's probably for the best, because I don't know what they would have been able to do for her. Yeah. Recovery would have been awful. The lady had Sun B's children sent to the residence of Princess Haiwang for their protection. So that's his younger sister and his mm-hmm. last surviving sister. And provided Sun B's family with a large amount of money to cover funeral expenses. Jeez. And he never spoke her name again after that. It was as if she had never existed. Of course. Prince Sato threw a go board at his wife, which is kind of like checkers. And they're very heavy wooden boards. Okay. Striking her in the face so hard that she had a bruise around her eye and had to miss a ceremony for the king as a result to hide it. Wow. The prince did have his lucid moments. And one day while conversing with his wife, he horrified her by saying that now that the king had a grandson that he loves dearly, he was no longer needed and likely to be killed soon. I mean, that's how they would have done it in Europe. <laughs> yeah. He, he would have been murdered a lot sooner, though. It was true that the king dearly loved his grandson. By the time he was seven, the king invited Prince Isen to join him during his morning audience with the ministers. It was noted by the court analyst that the child was bright, confident, and shared many of the king's traits. The king was recorded as saying, quote, the royal grandson is smart and dutiful. I will entrust my kingdom to him, end quote. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Prince Sato loved his son. Yeah. Even if he lamented the fact that his father seemed to love him more. Yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of a more common thing than you think, though. Mm-hmm. You know, like you would assume your parents love your your children more than you, even if that's not necessarily true, mm-hmm. just because it's a different kind of love. Mm-hmm. By the time Isan was 10 and it was time to select a suitable wife for him, it surprised many when the prince was able to conduct himself appropriately during the selection process. What does that mean? Because he'd been so erratic up until that point. So they oh, okay. they were like, oh my God, Prince Sato is actually... Being a human being? Behaving how he's supposed to during this really important ceremony and process. Hmm. Although he was pale and sweaty, he managed to dress himself and sit quietly during the proceedings. Unfortunately, during the third selection process, when the girl who had been selected to be his son's bride was to be presented to the royal family, his quirks presented themselves. Uh-oh. He changed clothes several times and burned the ones he didn't like. He also burned several of his hats. And when he arrived for the ceremony, his father was so enraged with him that he sent him away. Yeah, I bet. So he wasn't even able to be there to see who had been chosen for his son. Yeah. I mean, he can't. They can't scare away the person that's being chosen. Mm -hmm. After this, Sato refused to speak to his father in a respectful manner and had the court ladies and eunuchs at his residence shout unthinkable curses and vile sexual accusations at the king and queen while he smiled and nodded. Wow, he could get them to go against the king like that? They didn't want to, but they were afraid that if they didn't, he was going to kill them. Yeah, I suppose the risk is a lot greater with him than with anyone else. Because they were his servants, not the not right. king and queens. And the king has been less murdery to date. When his sister, Princess Hao Wang, came to visit, worried for her brother, mm-hmm. he attacked and attempted to sexually assault her. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. She was too afraid to tell her father what happened, and Sato's mental health continued to deteriorate. Mm. At this point, the prince had become obsessed with death and turned his rooms into a tomb before ordering a great underground tunnel to be constructed that led from his residence to those of the rest of his family. He soon began threatening the members of his family that he would travel through the tunnels to kill them in their sleep. Great. Awesome. Trigger warning. 
uh, skip ahead a few mi- a few seconds as there will be mentions of suicide. Mm. That spring, the stress of the situation had reached such a fever pitch amongst the members of the palace that the minister of the right completed suicide. And two weeks later, the minister of the left and the new minister of the right did the same. Wow. So three members of the royal advisors, pretty much. That's crazy. It got so bad that the king asked Sato's mother what should be done. She went to visit her son, only to stumble upon a truly bizarre scene. The prince had prepared an elaborate feast for her arrival, with tables piled high with fruit, ginseng cake, and wine. He read her a poem he had written on long life. During the course of their meal, a big parade took place in her honor, including the military band, dancers, and musicians. When she was asked to take part in the parade, she did so reluctantly, and instead of spending the night, she feigned illness and went away. Before leaving, she spoke with Lady Haigung, and the two wept as they were unsure of what could be done for Prince Sato. Hmm. So she met with his wife, and they both just started crying because they were like, we don't even know what to do anymore. I don't, how could you know what to do? I mean, especially if you think back then, there was nothing to do. Mm -hmm. There were no real treatments. Yeah. Especially somebody who's like, who's going to treat somebody who might murder them if they say the wrong thing? Yeah. When she returned home, Lady Sewoni dictated a letter to the king that read as follows. Quote, a mother should never write these words, and yet I am left with no other recourse. In order to protect the life of the royal grandson and to preserve intact the E dynasty, which has lasted these 400 years, the crown prince cannot be allowed to live. Even to make such a suggestion is an outrage and a sin against humanity, and may I never be forgiven. End quote. Mm. following this she went to bed and refused all sustenance because she was so she didn't die but she was pretty upset with herself because she was basically signing her son's death warrant yeah after receiving her letter the king let the prince know that he would be at his residence within the hour and he should be ready to receive him as prince sato dressed in the dragon robe of the crown prince he called his wife to him and told her that today was the day he would be killed he asked to see his son, thinking it would be the last time he would see him. Mm-hmm. Lady Haigung, terrified that he may do something to their child, tried to delay him as he was currently studying with his tutors, but the prince persisted. She wrote a letter to the king in the hopes of delaying Sato's request, and the king instructed that Prince Sato should see him at Hyeongjun Shrine. The prince okay. agreed and set off immediately. By law and tradition, a royal body could not be injured even by the king himself. So all who accompanied the prince were unsure how the matter would be settled because it was obvious that one of them would need to die. Right. On July 4th, 1762, the king was thundering inside the Hyeongjun shrine and he had his sword in his hand. Ooh. He yelled that his son was a disgrace and Prince Sato begged his forgiveness. At this point, the only people present in the shrine were the king and prince Lord Munno, who was the king's chief analyst, and Yi young Ke, the prince's diarist. 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 The prince's diarist. <laughs> diarist. 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 <laughs> the king struck the ground with his sword and stated, quote, You are no longer the crown prince. You are a commoner. Take off your robe. End quote. Ooh. The prince begged him to reconsider, but the king told him once again to remove his robe or he would have the royal guards take it off him. After removing his hat with jade strings, he removed his robe and folded it neatly next to his hat. He was left in a suit of unbleached cloth that was typically worn when one was in a state of mourning. This enraged the king as he did not know about the prince's clothing phobia and that he wore this cloth to prevent him from breaking out in rashes. Mm. So he thought he was wearing it because he intended to kill the king. Yeah, I can see where this is going. The king then stated, quote, You leave me no choice. I need to see no further signs of your disobedience, end quote. And he requested that a rice chest be brought to the shrine. Once the rice chest was brought to the shrine, the king instructed the prince to climb inside it. 
The prince begged him not to do this, as it was the middle of summer and stiflingly hot. But after the king shouted at him to get in and once again struck the ground with his sword, he obeyed, perhaps thinking that if he did so, he would be forgiven. The chest was 1.3 meters or four feet square. Wow. Hearing this, because she was outside the gates, mm -hmm. Haigung, trigger warning, attempted suicide with scissors, but was stopped before she could complete it. Uh. Because at that time, if you were killed, you as in the prince, your mm -hmm. family would be killed as well. Oh. So that's why she did that. Jeez. The prince sat with his knees up and his head down before the servant who brought the chest lowered the lid. The prince was terrified of the dark, and he calmly pleaded to be let out. It was at this moment that his son, Prince Isen, appeared at the outer gate of the shrine and begged the king to forgive his father. The king had him sent away, and the chest had a rope put around it so that the lid was secured tight. Mm -hmm. Lady Haigung wrote a letter to the king begging for clemency for herself and her son, Isen. As I told you, at this time in history, they could also have been killed for Sato's transgressions. Right. The king chose to pardon both of them, as Isen would now become his successor to the throne. So his, because he favored him, that's the whole reason why they survived? Mm-hmm. And not only that, but because he technically did not kill Sato. No. He just put him in a box. Yep. After this, the king ordered that everyone leave the shrine and the gate was shut. For three days, those outside the shrine could hear the prince begging for forgiveness, then food, then water. Mm. Nothing was brought in for the prince. No. On the eighth day of his confinement, during which a horrible drought with scorching heat had taken place, a storm broke out and a heavy downpour began. The thunder was so loud that it shook the palace, and lightning struck and split a tree in the palace courtyard that had stood there for centuries. The prince, who was terrified of thunder, was alive at the start of the storm. You could hear him crying. The following morning, the king had the rice chest opened, and it was discovered that at some point during the storm, Prince Sato had died. Okay. Crown Prince Sato died on July 12, 1762, at the age of 27. So much has happened to him in such a small period of time. Mm -hmm. Wow. He held the title of regent for 13 years. He was buried on Mount Meibung San in Yangju, but was moved by his son, King Chi Ungjo, to its current location in 1789. Lady Hai Igung was buried alongside her husband when she passed on January 13th, 1816, at the age of 80. Wow, she lived a lot longer. Mm -hmm. I ho hopefully she had a better life. See, and typically if your husband had died, mm -hmm. you would have ended your own life to be with them. So she yeah. chose to live to raise her son and her two daughters. Yeah. In 1899, Prince Sato and his wife were posthumously given the titles of Emperor Yangzhou and Empress Hyunyong during the reign of Emperor Kujong. Their tomb, as well as that of their son, King Chi Yongzhou, and his wife, Queen Hai Yui, were upgraded and renamed Yong Nyong. Nice. And that is the story of Crown Prince Sato, who was also known as the Coffin King. Ouch. Mm -hmm. What a way to be known after everything that happened. Right. Like, don't get me wrong. He was a nightmare man. Mm -hmm. But there were so many things that could have... So many interventions that could have been made. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. Yeah. And it's hard to say if that would have, it would have fixed anything. anything. would have helped. You know, yeah. especially with how quickly his mental health seemed to deteriorate towards the end when he yeah. was like just killing people all the time. Yeah. Not great. Not yeah, great. Not, not great. great. Leave the Lights On is a true crime podcast with a paranormal twist. Join creator Eliza and her co-host as they explore terrifying true stories and chilling crimes. Growing up, Eliza had an odd obsession with the darkest desires of humanity and an insatiable curiosity about the afterlife. Now, each week, Eliza brings you tales that will make you want to lock your doors, hide in your room, and of course, leave the lights on. Available on Spotify and Apple Podcast.
This week's podcast plug is Leave the Lights On, which is the Oracle Network podcast of the month. Ooh. Each week, Eliza shares true crime stories with a paranormal twist. Not only is she going to be on an upcoming episode of Can You Crack the Cramp Word, but her show is amazing and a must listen for anyone who likes a little spook factor with their true crime. Spoopy. Spoopy. We love spoopy. And we'll have a link to her show in the show notes. Awesome. And our good friend Ashley from Studying Scarlet and Pineapple Pizza wants to know who would win in a fight, Geralt of Rivia or Loki? Geralt. Why? He's more patient. I think he'd be able to wait it out. What do you think? I don't know. I was pondering this prior to us recording. Like, I feel like Geralt would win. But Don't also, get me wrong. But also Loki like, would put up a good fight. But like, but also Loki's a god, you know, demigod, a demigod, demigod, demigod. Excuse me, a demigod. <laughs> so, I feel like he would find some way to to get out of it to like cheat death. You know what I mean? Probably, yeah. So I'm gonna go with Loki, and not just because I love Loki, but because I feel like he's a lot harder to kill than I think people realize and granted this is a a fight it's not necessarily a fight to the death but right i don't know i I think Geralt would win yeah Mm. i can see it yeah and it's sexy (laughs) (laughs) anyway what's something good you'd like to share this week um something good my good thing is so i'm i'm kind of slow to the social media game and I finally shared. I was approached by Candu Canines, who was approached by Animal Planet to do a spot on Candu Canines and what they do and how they raise their service dogs. And Candu Canines approached me because I'm very good at making people cry. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just with the story of of Willie and I and how we were kind of matched and and how he saved my life within the first two months of him living with me. Uh, so they have, it's, it's on the Puppy Bowl, which you can get on Animal Planet and Discovery Plus, but it's the Puppy Bowl 18 and it's the episode More Ways to Serve. And I think if you get past the third minute, you'll see Willie and it's really cute. He actually hates having his picture taken he really hates it when you film him. And so when the film crew was in my house, he was like, everybody get out of my house. Like, yeah. what are you doing here? He hated it. And so there's there's a little like spot of me being like, sorry, he really doesn't like cameras. And like the camera crew loved it. And they were like, oh my God, that's so cute. And I was like, no, I'm serious. <laughs> like, he really hates you guys. <laughs> he doesn't understand why there's a camera on his face. Yeah. But he, he did well. He did really well. And when people weren't working, he got to like say hi and sniff them and stuff. So it was good. Yeah. Um, I have shared it on our Facebook page, but I'll make sure that it gets shared again on our other social channels so you guys can see it in case you haven't already. Yeah. But yeah, I highly recommend it. It's really, it's it's a cool little spot. It's like 15, 16 minutes of you kind of sh- it they're showing the journey of when a service puppy is born up to when they're matched and some puppies go to prison to train it's it's really cool so yeah I recommend it and it kind of goes through the different types of dogs that they train as well mm-hmm. like the different types of um jobs the dogs get so yep it was good yeah what about you what's something good i'm trying to debate if i want to like geolocate myself or not how bad Oh, fuck it. I'll I'll just say it. This past week, we finally had our holiday party at work for one of my teams. Not not the whole company, but one of my teams. And we went to Can Can Wonderland, which is a really cool place. It's in Northeast. Kind of St. Paul. I don't know what it technically is, but it's... uh, Yeah, if you throw a rock in Northeast, you can hit St. Paul. (laughs) Yeah. And people, so don't throw rocks. But don't um, throw rocks. It's got an indoor mini golf course that's like where all the different holes are made by different artists. Like they've got really Mm -hmm. cool themes. And then there's a bunch of like old school arcade games and stuff in there. There's also uh, like a beer wall and 
a bunch of other cool things. But we rented out part of it for this party. It was really fun doing mini golf with some of my coworkers. And it's a cool enough place where I may take my youngest there over spring break while Thomas has our oldest and they go up to go snowboarding somewhere fun here in Minnesota. So nice. I might take her at some point. I think she'd really like it. I think she'd love that. Mm -hmm. Well, shall we? Yep. You can find us online at yieldcrimepodcast.com. We're also on Twitter at Yield Crime Pod and on Facebook and Instagram at Yield Crime Podcast. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all of our videos. We have different playlists so you can get every single episode in chronological order. Or if you just want to check out the Cramport segments where we have guest podcasters on to try to see if they can figure out some Victorian slang terms, there's a playlist for that as well. It's harder than you think. It's so hard. If you would like to send us something in the mail, we'd love that. Mm -hmm. And you can do that so at our P.O. Box, which is Yield Crime Podcast, P.O. Box 341, Wyoming, Minnesota 55092. You can also email us at yieldcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Submit your questions, story suggestions, or if you just want to reach out and just say hi. That's nice, too. It's very nice. A great way to support the show if you would like to help us but can't do so financially would be to leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Good Pods, or leave us a five-star rating on Spotify. Mm -hmm. The following is a five-star review from Jen Burt on Apple Podcasts, and they say, Unique. I love the theme of this podcast. They bring about cases in history I have never heard before. It's a wonderfully refreshing take on the true crime genre. Great job! Exclamation point. Thanks. Thank you. If you'd like to support us financially, you can do so with a one-time donation on Buy Me a Coffee. You can also join our Patreon for as low as a dollar a month and join other awesome patrons such as Aaron and Justin. Thank you, guys. Thank you. If you'd like to purchase some of our merch, you can do so on our Tee Public shop or head over to our Redbubble store for a wider variety and selection of items. And on that note, as always, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Madison. And we'll see you next time with another tale. As old as crime. <laughs>